The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but long for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill because this caged bird sings of freedom. Every 30 seconds in America, a child is born into the cage of poverty. That means that by the end of this TED Talk, 15 minutes, 30 children would have been born in poverty in America. That means that by the end of this wonderful conference, 2,880 children in America would have been born into poverty. And poverty is a critical issue for TEDx San Joaquin, for San Joaquin County, for Stockton, California, because in our county, 47% of all Latino families and 42% of African American families live on incomes of $35,000 or less. That figure is about 20,000 less than it costs to attend this fine institution for one year. That figure is probably less than what it took to throw this wonderful TEDx event. And poverty is a critical issue for our community because poverty is correlated with all types of other negative social ills. A child born in poverty is more than likely to be in the 86% of African American children, the 83% of Latino children, and the 58% of white children who can't read or do math at grade level in fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade. In Stockton, California, a child born in poverty has a life expectancy of 15 years less than a child born in a more affluent zip code in Stockton, the discrepancy between 95202 and 95207, 12 minutes away from each other, is 15 years. Not because of choices these children are making, because none of these children chose to be born in poverty. A child born in poverty is 50% more likely to be a victim of or a perpetrator of a violent crime, such as the crimes we read about in the Stockton record every morning. The Children's Defense Fund calls poverty the funnel through which the cradle or prison pipeline operates. So whenever I'm working with young people throughout the nation, in the community, and even adults, I share these maddening statistics, and I always get the same response, especially from students. It goes something like this. Mr. Tubbs, yes. So everyone has access to these statistics, right? I mean, yeah, it's not hidden Michael Tubbs knowledge. It's online. If people research, they can find it. Then why are people acting so surprised when people don't graduate from high school, when we have record number of homicides? It, it makes sense to me if, if statistically you could predict that some students are going to fail. It seems like, in a way, people born in poverty are set up. And I've never told them this in class, but statistically speaking, my student is, in fact, correct. And the setup is something I know intimately well. I was born here, right in this community, Southside, Stockton, California. I was one of the children born into the cycle, like Norman said, or into the cage of poverty. My mother, she had me as a teenager. My first conversation with my father took place not in a room, not at Denny's, not in a nice restaurant, but behind bars in prison. I went to SUSD schools, and the message I received a lot growing up was that the options I had, that I was in fact set up for two things, prison or death. And that's not something unique to me. I went to high school with all type of people. Some of my best friends that in fact today, at 22 years old, are either in prison or dead. Children who 22 years ago were born into poverty in this community. And that was almost my end. But luckily, and thanks to God, I was able to go to Stanford on a full scholarship, get my master's and bachelor's. I was able to work in the White House. I was able to work at Google. I was able to have lunch with Oprah Winfrey. And I don't say that to brag, but I say that to say all the quote unquote success has been motivated by a central question, and a question that brought me back home to my community. And the question was, how in the world did I make it? And how do I empower other people from backgrounds like mine to upset the setup? It's this question that brought me to strike up a conversation with one of my best friends, Tylesha Hooker, in the summer of 2010. We sat down, we read the Stockton record, and noticed that everybody who was being murdered for that month 
was between 16 and 24 years old, was from a neighborhood rife with violence, came from poverty, and came from a failing school. So we said, what was it about us? How did we upset the sub, and how could we take that to scale for other students? And we looked at each other and said, you know what? There was something about education. Somehow, she's at Pacific, I'm at Stanford. There was something about the education we received that empowered us. So we said, okay, we're gonna try this education thing. And we started the Summer Success and Leadership Academy here at the University of Pacific. And we said, we wanna take students who feel they are set up, students who statistically speaking are in fact set up and bring them to this campus for a week. And we don't wanna just bring them here for a horse and pony show. We want to teach them about the setup. We had lessons over the statistics that went over earlier. We talked about Tupac and the rose that grew from concrete. We talked about Invictus and the fact that you are the master of your own fate and the captain of your own soul. But we also talked about the truth. We talked about the statistics. We talked about how we could predict if a room full of African-American males, according to the Truth Defense Fund, one in three will be in jail sometime in their lifetime. That's not because I have a crystal ball that can analyze people's choices and predict what they're going to do. It's because statistics tell me that it's true. So we brought them on campus for a week. We put them in groups and we had them develop community action plans and figure out how are you going to change your community? How are you going to upset the setup? And the students we picked weren't the quote unquote leader types all the time. A lot of them had below 3.0 GPAs. A lot of them were in alternative schools. A lot of them had disciplinary issues. But by the end of the week, we had a UOP professor saying, wow, you must have picked the greatest students in Stockton. They're so intelligent. We had parents and community members saying, wow, they did this research in a week. How in the world did you guys empower those students to upset the setup? So if I can share anything with you today, I'll share with you two stories of two students in our program who are doing amazing things. One was born in Eastside Stockton. Like myself, teenage mother, never met his father, gang members in his family, but through our participation in the program and being empowered, is now a freshman here at the University of Pacific. Another student, 16 years old when we met her, in an abusive relationship, a foster child, didn't know either of her parents, is now a sophomore here at the University of Pacific. So the secret sauce worked, we realized, that we did teach our students how to upset the setup. And if I was a mean person, I would keep that information to myself. But we have a whole lot of students in our community who need to be empowered and taught how to upset the setup. And we have educators in the audience. We have parents. We have mentors. We have friends, we have concerned community members. So before I leave this stage, I just want to share briefly with you four things that will help all the young people in our community, in our city, in our nation who are trapped in the cycle of poverty, how to upset the setup. Number one, first we have to admit the setup is real. Too often people say, well, Michael, you made it. You went to Stanford, anybody can make it. No, anybody can make it, but statistically it's not possible. And students, young people know, they're not dumb. They feel a sense of powerlessness. They, they read the news, they walk in the neighborhoods, they go to the schools, and they realize that failure is not only an option, but seemingly seems to operate as a destiny. So the first thing we do is always be real with our students and say, you know what, the setup is real. Statistically, there are all these things that will put you on trajectories to failure. But we don't leave them there. The second thing we do, we empower versus inspire. And that's not me playing with semantics. If I'm trying to inspire you, that means Michael Tubbs has some secret knowledge to give you. I'm going to give you inspiration. But I submit to you today that people in poverty don't need to be inspired to not be poor. No one needs to be inspired. No, seriously. <laughs> no one needs to be inspired to not be hungry. No one needs to be inspired to not hear gunshots every night. No one needs inspiration to break the cycle of poverty. Are you kidding me? What they need is to be empowered. So if, if I'm inspiring you, I'm giving you something. But in the Leadership Academy, we empower. We let the student, students see what they have inside them, how they themselves have all the skills needed to upset the setup. The third thing we do is we affirm these students' identities. Far too often in working with at-risk youth or set-up youth, we say all the deficits. They lack parents. They lack health care. They lack role models, they lack skills, they lack hard work, they lack ingenuity, they lack intelligence, they lack, no, 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 no. To be a student from an at-risk background and to even sit in the classroom after hearing gunshots the night before, to me that suggests resilience. That suggests brilliance. That, that represents a strength and a vitality that we need to capitalize on because these students are brilliant. Are you kidding me? How can you sit still 
in a classroom and listen to a boring lecture for six hours, knowing that when you get home, you're going to hear gunshots and you might not be able to eat. That's something we have to build upon. Our students don't have deficits. They have assets. And we tell them, yes, you're low income. Yes, you're from Stockton, but you're a leader. Tupac was low income. Dolores Horta was low income. And look what they become. You're a leader. The last thing we do in the SSLA is we connect their education and their program to something more than a grade, something more than being successful for yourself. We connect it to community uplift. We say you're here at Pacific because you're the solution. You're here in this Leadership Academy getting these classes, not because I'm going to give you a grade, but because we're going to give you the tools to break down oppressive systems, to upset the setup not only for yourself and for your families. So we empower our students to upset the setup. Might I tell you, in 10 years, Forbes will have to write a whole nother article about this great city that I call home. If we upset the setup, I could go back to Taylor Elementary School where I was three months ago, reading about Dr. King, and I went, got to the point where he was shot. And every student in that classroom knew somebody that was shot at six years old. If we upset the setup in our community, I could go back to Scribner Street and talk to the five-year-old who sleeps on the floor every day and say, you know what, young man? Your community is not ideal. The setup is real. What you're feeling is not an illusion. It's more than you pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. We have to give you boots first, but you can upset the setup. So as I prepare to close, please do not clap for me. Rather, use your hands to roll up your sleeves and do the work necessary to touch the lives of young people, the 30 young people who are born in poverty just at the end of this speech, the 2,880 that will be born at the end of this day. Students like me who are in our schools, in our community, have all the potential in the world, like Norman said, but just need somebody not to inspire them, but to empower them, to need somebody to recognize that in many ways they are set up to fail, but there's a difference between the facts and the truth. The fact is all the statistics are true. The truth is, like Tupac said, roses can still go to, from concrete and communities like Stockton, counties like San Joaquin can in fact work together, collaborate, empower, motivate, mentor, and equip our students to upset the setup, not only in their lives, but in the lives of all the people that surround them. Thank you.